So social media provides a very good platform for you to really build that brand. Because kuna watu wajakusikia. Yeah, you know, especially this young generation. Unawambia, siju mimi naitua wakili so and so. But I've never heard about you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, this is Horizon TV and thank you so much for choosing it at this hour. My name is Abdurrahman Gaddafi Yassin and this is Show Me The Market. Today, this is a part two of the last conversation that we had on digital marketing with our brother Muhammad Onyango. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, welcome. We, I, I want us to continue with our discussion from where we left it the, the other time in terms of uh, online digital marketing and everything that deals with the social medium. And I feel like today for you to have all of these things, you should have first the platforms, the online platforms, the social online platforms on your phones or on your gadgets. Maybe what are the some of the importance of the social media? Social media uh, for a brand whether a brand, a brand can, in this person can either be an individual, for example, a politician going to buy for a big seat or a business that um, wants to be known better and, uh, of course, by the end of the day, increase their revenue. So social media comes in by offering an avenue for you to amplify your message, uh, for you to build your brand and brand reputation, and for you to build an online engagement separate from the people you've known. Let me just take you back a bit. Mm -hmm. Back in the days when there was, we, we had no smartphones, mm -hmm. uh, who, like those of us born in, uh, in late, seven, late 80s and early 90s, mm. we used to gather around uh, the dinner table in the mm. evening. Mm. Yes. About JVC, <laughs> TV, and both of so, <laughs> yeah. so we used to watch uh, KBC <coughs> Channel 1, and I think the only, uh, the only other channel that was there was KTM. KTM. Yeah. So we used to watch news and know what is happening. Okay. So a lot of brands, I remember... Uh, vividly, mm. copper oil. Copper oil used to <laughs> really do a lot of ads, and uh, and Omo used to do a lot of ads. That is Unilever and other other guys. But things have changed. Mm -hmm. Things have changed, and uh, people have adapted. Brands have adapted uh, really quickly. So right now, we are talking about a population that uh, almost everyone, almost everyone in their adult life has a smartphone. So then. These people are spending a significant amount of time on their phones. And it's not just on their phones, on their social, me on the social media platforms, mm -hmm. on Facebook, where almost everybody is. Because Facebook has around 1.1 billion users. Mm -hmm. TikTok is the best with around 1.2 billion users. Then we have Instagram at around 900, 850 million. Then we have Twitter mm -hmm. um, at around uh, 700, 650 million okay. users. So marketing then is about getting these places where they spend most of their time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where they spend most of their time? On social media platforms. Okay. Then that means we have to, as a brand, as, as Unilever, as a restaurant, as a hotel, we need to have a social media page on the socials, post what we do, amplify our messages to attract these people who are spending much of their time on the socials. So social media provides a very good platform for you to really build that brand. Because kuna watu wajakusikia, yeah, you know, especially this young generation. Unawambia, siju mimi naitua wakili so and so. But I've never heard about you. Yeah. So, but if you do have a TikTok account and you have an Instagram account, then they'll hear about you. That is well managed. Then they'll build a community with you. Then you are going to be able to sell to them. Then you're going to be able to increase your revenue and build your reputation on the social. You know, you've mentioned about the majority or the... The, the much time that people are, are, are putting their attentions on these social media platforms, which can lead me to another question, like wh why do you think most of people, they've shifted from advertising? Yes, they're doing it on these TVs and everything. They have said in back days, they used to do that more. Why is it that nowadays everyone is just running on social platforms? Everyone is just running to, to this person who has a lot of followers so that at least their product, they can reach out to, 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 to the large crowd or to, or to the large numbers. Social media disrupted a lot of things. In every, in every generation, there is always something disruptive happening. Like right now where we are, there's something called artificial intelligence, which has really disrupted a lot of things. And uh, trust me, it's going to also, it has its own pros and cons. But back to your question, uh, social media is what we have now that um, has replaced the traditional media. You, you know, people are not spending much time on, uh, 
on uh, on, on TV. I mean, with your phone, you have an app for Showmax, you have an app for Netflix, you have an app for uh, Prime Video and these other platforms. So you can basically watch on your phone Modern uh, Muslim one and a remote, you have your phone. <laughs> so then that means that uh, social media has really disrupted a lot of things, and we are having people spending their time uh, on that socials. So that's why, and because it has disrupted things, uh, initially we used to look at guys, for example, like uh, Leonard Mambo Botella, those are big names back then, um, uh, Ali Salim Manga, and these are the big, big names. Those are the big, those, are, those were the influential people we looked up to mm -hmm. right now they're old people and uh, now there's a new crop of influencers of mm -hmm. prominent people who are they mm -hmm. the ones who have big following on mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. so that's why people are spending much of their time come out and append a gossip like our ladies uh, they can get their gossip from this particular influencer mm -hmm. if you want tech news there's also that somebody who uh, has a lot of content to do tech Another one has a lot of in information to do with food content and hospitality. That, like me, for example, mm -hmm. if you check Muhammad Onyang on Twitter and other platforms, mm -hmm. and then there are cars, and it's different. Yeah. Depending with your niche. Depending with your niche. Wow, that's so nice. Maybe Muhammad, what makes you unique from other maybe directors, CEOs who are also venturing into these marketing on online marketing strategies or online marketing business? It's my passion. Okay. Uh, if you ask any of my clients who I've, I've worked with before or I've collaborated with before, they'll mm -hmm. tell you, I, I enter deals 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in there with, with my heart, with my lungs, with every organ of my body. And I, I make sure that I deliver. And the success of my client is personal to me. You know, their success is my success. Their failure is my failure. That, I believe that is what really makes me unique because there are people who are doing it for the money. I don't, I, I'm not saying I don't do it for the money. I need the money as well. But uh, it is passion that really drives me. I want to see results. I want to see my clients succeed. It's that passion that really fuels me first. Yeah. There is another question here that I'd like to read. How do you measure and demonstrate the return of investment for online marketing initiative? Very well. Uh, in social media, our digital media, as we put it, because uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, to, I'm referring too much to social media because my agency really is more of a social media agency. Yeah, we are managing the social media accounts of different uh, clients. So how do we measure uh, results? We have, in social media, we have what we call uh, KPIs, Key Performance uh, Indices. And in Key Performance Indices, we look, for example, um, things like uh, web traffic. What was the web traffic to our page, to this client's page? We look at um, the usual analytics, like how many followers, how many new followers, how many new followers, uh, how many replies to a post, to make a post your breakfast, how many made inquiries or liked or retweeted or shared this post. So those are the usual. Uh, we look at the web traffic. We look at uh, new followers. We look at the engagement. We look at how they have felt about it because we can also measure that. Yeah, are they talking negatives about the food? What, 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 what kind of compliments are they giving us? So we are able to measure that through different tools and, of course, through the usual uh, analytics for every social media platform. Come on, in Twitter, Twitter can analytics. You just tap on the analytics, it will give you all the data. And we can actually measure in real time and know this month we've done an improvement. Or this month, to melegea kidogo pefanyam chezo. No. Nice. Maybe, you know, you've mentioned something about getting the reactions and also getting feedback from your clients and everything. Maybe there are some posts that you can you can put on your social platforms and maybe this time you don't find any comment, but the likes are there. Sometimes how can you measure that you're doing so well in these platforms? Because we have been in the industry for some time now and uh, we've determined what works for us and what doesn't work for us. For example, for me, uh, my, my, my morning posts always go up at around 8 in the morning. And I always know, I always know what to expect in terms of uh, uh, reaction, the, the retweets, for example, on Twitter, where I'm big. The retweets, the likes, uh, the comments and everything. So if, if I get something different from that, I'm able to know uh, Leo Sis Konzori. But again, days are not the same. Uh, days are not the same, kabisa kabisa. We sometimes we convince ourselves and encourage ourselves to say, ah, let me pick a post and put two likes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they don't have internet from their end. 
<laughs> the post is just good. Oh, Anashida. How do you manage negative comments when it comes to, to your timeline? I've heard of someone saying, whenever I see a negative comment, I either delete or hide the comment. You don't need to hide. It's okay to be emotional. This is a client's page and you want only the best news to yes. come, only the best replies to come, and then one person comes and tells you. <laughs> one person comes and spoils everything. In marketing, we, we are always aware that uh, not everyone, trust me, with human beings and in being in the service industry, for example, uh, not everyone will, will be pleased with what you're doing. Uh, so here comes genuine, genuine, uh, we call them feedback. We call them feedback. There's what we call positive feedback where somebody says, are ah, you guys, your portions are right, your pricing is good, your service is fast. And then there's another person who will come and say, your service is good, your food is good, but your portions are not good. Yeah? <laughs> so you note that. And if you get the same complaint like that one, then actually that's a genuine one. Uh, but sometimes we have situations where we have haters, uh, haters coming and, uh, you know, they spew all the garbage on the replies. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and for clients, sometimes, they, you know, for example, let me give you, for example, Google ranking. You know, Google, Google for example, ranks you up to five star. And some clients want, no, I'm in Taka five, you five. Kwaile uh, reviews, Google reviews. So, unapata muta mepena review, anasema, ah, chakula ilikuwa kizu, lakini ingia kwa chowenu, cho chafu, ama ukuna maji, ama nini. So, unapata client, anakambia, moha, ndaka ufanye kazi, bwana. I want all, everything to be, to be, to be five. And that is a lie. For a good brand that understands itself, we, we always have negative. Check, check even, check even JW Mario, check, check Serena, check any brand that you know. They, there is always somebody complaining. Okay. <laughs> There's always somebody complaining. Negative feedback is basically to encourage us because we are never at our best. There's no day we will ever be at our best. There's always room for improvement, whether it is in service, whether it is in the portions, whether it is in hygiene, there's always room for service. But what we don't entertain is insults and spammy replies. For example, right now in Twitter, we have a situation where the situation where you post something even related with religion, mashallah, you've given a very good ayah yes. or hadith, mm -hmm. and then somebody comes and says, sex on bio, nudes on bio. Yes, it's, I've seen it's that. It's a pandemic right now on yes, Twitter. You know, a lot of spammy, 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 spammy replies. But we, we always maneuver, filter, uh, we go mute words, keywords and every, sorry, not keywords, we go mute words here and there and sort kind of, of, of comments are filtered with Twitter and then they, they cannot appear on your timeline. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for that insight uh, on our topic of discussion today, digital marketing. I'm taking a short break. When I get right back, we're going to have more discussion on this to understand more the online marketing and the social media platforms. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. For those who are joining us right now, this is Show Me the Market. And thank you so much for choosing Horizon TV. Our topic of discussion today, it's all about the digital marketing and services. And my guest today is Mohamed Anyango, who is trying to give us more inputs into this field or into this industry. Thank you so much, uh, Mohamed Anyango. And maybe I, I would like you to explain more how you adapt the online marketing approaches into different industries and different people. Let me first of all uh, quote uh, Chinu Achebe in Things Fall Apart. He says, Eneke the Bird said that since men had learned to shoot without missing, Eneke the Bird had learned to fly without patching. It's, it's basically um, a phrase that signifies that if when in a situation where things change, you have to adapt. So uh, in, 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 in this field, things do happen, th things change rapidly. And we have been, alhamdulillah, been able to adapt to the changes. For example, uh, for, for those of us who used to do a lot of ads on Google, Google ads and everything, you know, there are new features. For example, there's an ad block. You know, unachoshua sana from, from your end as a consumer, unangalia ini adia nini tena. This is so annoying. You know, block, una block, una block, una block, una block. You know, and says uh, why are we putting ads and uh, it's not working so we look for other strategies that is work, working well for example we've realized that um, word of mouth is still very powerful and there are people uh, who people look up to so then that's where for example the whole aspect of influencer marketing comes in there are people for example i have built my name on social media 
uh, as a person who is very passionate. Right now I'm having a Galaxy campaign, uh, Samsung Galaxy S24 campaign. And before that, we've been, I've been very consistent with uh, halal restaurants, halal restaurants and the whole hospitality sector. So when somebody, uh, so my opinion is, is regarded highly when it comes to the hospitality sector because I have been there for some time and uh, I am a thought leader in that area. So then there are also thought leaders and people who, when they give an opinion, for example, there are people who and analyze phones and they tell you this phone is good, this is better than this. And people listen and people, they, they influence how people purchase. So you realize that when ads are being blocked to Kunakule and things are not working well, then now we, what do we do? We spend part of our budget to, 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 to influencers who have crafted and are authority in different niches and then they are able to drive that traffic. Then how to block Wale and then you're going to read what is happening and you're going to make a decision to purchase okay maybe let us try to, to try to explain this or discuss this maybe is there any n notable change that maybe you've seen from the consumers that made you change your ways and strategies on how you're dealing with this digital marketing with the number of years that we've been in the industry we, we always see uh, different consumer um, uh, patterns that uh, especially with the data and we we, we we always see for example um like right now, there is this trend where uh, people are going, uh, not very late night, but let me say, people are going out right now in a row. People are going out for dinner at around 9, 10 at night. They're not going, they're not doing much of the lunches. So then it has en enabled us to tell our clients to, listen, you, you open at around 6 in the morning and you close at around 9. So we need to change this and we need to be opening at 7 or at 8 and then we need to be closing late. Because we've discovered that our clients prefer going out late in the night or, and they spend their time with their loved ones until maybe 11 or, or 12, uh, 12 midnight that they come back home. So that's one, for example, that's just one of the patterns that we've, we've, we've seen in, uh, in the hospitality industry. Yeah. So such kind of, of, of patterns change enable us to make informed decisions, especially uh, when we relay them to, to our clients. Yeah. On this journey, yeah. one time have you ever received a comment that made you feel like I have to think twice of what I'm doing? <laughs> uh, subhanallah, this is something that happens quite, uh, quite often. I am a food influencer. Apart from being a CEO and running an, a successful digital marketing agency, I am a food influencer. Food influencer basically means we shape opinion on where and when to eat. Right? So if I want to shape your opinion so that you start going to Westlands and start eating at Bala Decidan restaurant, one of the nice restaurants that we have there, then I have to be showcasing visually appealing photos of food from Syria. You know, the, the hummus and the, the pita bread and the mutabal and, uh, and uh, the, the chicken made the, the Syrian way and everything and the Syrian tea. And, and you, you get interested. And you know, food is so emotional, so, so food is so good. And guys like, I want to go to this place. Mm -hmm. Then, here comes now the challenge. Because you are posting this as part of your work. Sometimes you're just sleeping in your bed and you're touching your phone and you're posting. And the guys are like, hey, <laughs> You know, you're eating too much. Because you mchana, asubui, posting in lunchtime, you're posting in jioni. We have job. But the, the viewers are like, this guy is eating too much. So, my order is quite personal. Yeah, so those happens. Kuna kuwa bullied as well. Yeah, kuna kuwa bullied. Mbila kambi hata yu pichako yu kai poa. You know, yeah. So these things, you know, human beings are just human beings. So it happens a lot. Bullying, uh, people taking things personal. For example, if you're an influencer marketer. Na wale hata haupo kapisa. Mbila na kuhusudu kapisa la chakula chakula uko kula. You know. So in a quarter zero game, kwake uko. Maybe what are some of the safeties that one can adapt in order to have a safe place, a safe environment in the social platform so that at least they can do their work so well. You can make a post. After making that post, maybe you can find at the comment section someone saying that you can get the nudes at this point. Maybe how can we protect this so that at least to have a very work, good working environment? One of the things I've done for, for the sanity of my mind or to be okay, is that such kind of people, I have blocked them. You know, why should you entertain somebody who is you know, bringing spammy replies to, to you? So you block them, you have sanity of mind, and again, uh, uh, you filter, you filter some words. There are some words, for example, 
for, for, let me just give you an example which is different from food. Um, we had some propagandists, Israeli propagandists, who are doing a lot of fake videos and everything. And every time you're you on your timeline, you're seeing their posts. So you go to the, to the muted words, you mute that word, and you will never see them again. So they are the way you can mute, you can block them. Uh, if, if there are platforms which are too much, to, you feel that this is just too much for me, you can actually, uh, I mean, I mean leave, that, leave that platform. Because by the end of the day, see, it doesn't go to a platform. Mm -hmm. You can just decide to be on Facebook. <laughs> I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. so, so, but mm -hmm. the, the best thing to do is uh, to be safe, just basically block people, mute words. Mm -hmm. sanity, mm -hmm. Because that positive vibe is, 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 is really important. Nice. Thank you so much for that answer. And maybe another thing, it's about the competition. You, you know, when the competition is high, that means as well that the services that you guys are offering, it's so good. Maybe how sometimes do you deal with such people whereby you've put in a certain standard? Like for me to do this work, I have to pay this much. But there is someone just coming from now and be like, Give me 15k and I'm good to do the work. How do you deal with this? I believe this happens all across uh, many, many, many sectors. And uh, uh, digital marketing is not an exemption. So we have a situation where you have your red card. You know, you have your red card. You share that red card with me. You share the email. So you share the red card, subhanAllah. And then kidogo kidogo. Unajaribu follow up na jamaa kama kila kitu kwa sababu ah mimi hata nilipata somebody cheaper. So uh, the unfortunate thing with digital marketing is that we don't have a union unlike doctors who have a union unlike teachers who have a union. Uh, digital marketing there is no union and there is no there's no union body and there is no regulation as well in Kenya. Not everywhere in Kenya we don't have a regulation we don't have a union. So that means everyone is operating as they wish. You can you have one person who is charging a client two hundred thousand. Of course, they're charging two hundred thousand because of their expertise, because of the, re, the, the the resources and the labor that they have under their agency. Kuna another one charging hundred. I love Kunamutu, fresh from college or fresh from the university. Na kona nja, and I say man, let's let pay ten k. You know, so we have we have those kind of uh, uh, unhealthy, really unhealthy competition. But if you really understand your worth as a client. For us to get the desired results, we have to optimize the, the budget. Thank you. That, that's a well and a very good thing. But before that, as we wind up the show, maybe the, my last question is about the technology continues to evolve each and every day. Maybe what are some of the new trends are, that you've seen on technology that you can say that you believe will shape up the industry? Very good question. Uh, as of 2024, uh, today is 27th of March. What what we are grappling with, uh, are, are, or what we think is is good and is also becoming going to be a very big challenge, is the whole subject matter of artificial intelligence. Uh, let me give you an example. Back then, in a in a typical uh, digital marketing agency, we used to have somebody called a copywriter. So, a, who is a copywriter? The copywriter is when we want to put a post, we want to put up a post, is the one who is going to give us the caption. You know, kickstart your Monday with a healthy breakfast consisting of fried, stir fried liver and, and, and pancakes. Yeah? Oh, finger licking, whatever. That guy is called a, cop a copywriter. So with, with artificial intelligence, whether it's Gemini for Microsoft or uh, ChatGPT4 or any other Nino, you are literally able to prompt it and it gives you a very good caption. And the app is free. So what does that mean? The copywriter has no job. You, uh, you, 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 you are in the fashion industry. When you have a new bale of clothes or a new, uh, whatever, uh, a new range of clothes, there are these models who uh, wear those dresses and they pose and there's a cameraman who is taking the shots and then curating the shots or the videos and sharing. AI is giving you pictures of non-existent people. Very beautiful people, very handsome gentlemen and they're wearing the same clothes. So the, the photographer has no job, the model has no job, because you can buy stock photos of these people wearing uh, the, designer, the designer clothes. So for me as an agency, it, it's making our, uh, making our work easier, alhamdulillah, because we are able to come up with the captions on time. But that means as an agency, we don't have a copywriter. Uh, we are able to buy stock photos, for example, for our airline. It means me going to JK to shoot 
maybe uh, content we are going to reduce on that budget. Yeah, so it, it has it has its own pros and cons, but it is something that we really need to look at from the bigger picture. We have big companies like Google, Microsoft, like Facebook, which has laid off and people declared redundant because AI has come in. And AI is not just in captioning. AI can even be, you know, robots doing this and that, arranging stuff, you know, printing stuff. So it, 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 it's a menace, really. Yeah, if, if not control, it become a menace. But for now, Alhamdulillah, we're just taking advantage of it and, you know, using it here and there to make our work easier. And again, another problem is, you know, as we continue being dependent on AI, people are becoming less creative. Because I could sit down like this and with a copyright and we come with captions. Right now, Mutu, I remember there's a time we went to a shop and, some, and I gave somebody 50 bob and I was buying something and somebody was calculating four times four. You know, on, on a calculator, four times four. You know, you remember those back in the days when the mathematical, we used to have a mathematical table yeah, yeah. behind, uh, on, 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 the, on the back cover and we could cram four times four, 16, four times five, 20. You know, it's no, it's no longer there. So AI is coming big time, it is helping, but of course it has also created a dent in, in, in other areas. Thank you so much, Mohamed Danyango, for each and every information that you've shared with us today. And maybe your parting shot as we wind up the show. Alhamdulillah. So uh, I'm really grateful for you guys having me and uh, I don't take it for granted. Uh, as a digital marketing agency that is specifically in the niche of hospitality, we have grown brands. We have grown a Lucera restaurant, we have grown House of Mandi, we've grown Waterfront Residence in Nyali, and we are growing other brands as well. So if you are in the hospitality industry, you have a halal restaurant, you have a resort, you have an Airbnb, an airline, a long distance uh, bus that plies maybe Nairobi, Mombasa, next level marketing agency is your place to go, is your agency to go to. If you want to stand out from the crowd, Thank you so much, Mohamed Onyango, for giving us this information and also the knowledge about the online services and the online marketing at large. And thank you so much, my viewer back from home, for choosing Horizon TV and watching Show Me the Market. Till next time, same place, same time. My name is Abdurrahman Graf Yasin.